Okay. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome. This is a special call meeting, Brea Tourism Commission. Today is uh, Monday, March 29th, and it's a little bit after 3.30. So just uh, take a quick roll call of the commissioners. Of course, I've got myself, uh, Charles Arnold. Present. Thank you, Charles. Uh, looks like we are missing Laura Carpenter and Christy Napier, Linda Ross, Charles Saunders. Here. And Rick Thomas. Here. All right, so we do have a quorum, which allows us to uh, make a vote if necessary. Um, so we've got this meeting called to order. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and open this up to discussion. Uh, and this is about the uh, possible grant from the USDA. Uh, it's a grant match uh, for long-term Bria Tourism Comprehensive Strategic Plan. Uh, and what this relates to is a facilitator to help us kind of move forward uh, with that long-term plan and uh, really kind of talk about how we're gonna fund uh, that facilitator in conjunction with the grant. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up and I see that Linda is joining us. Welcome, Linda. I'm gonna go ahead and count you as present. Thank you for, for joining on. I know that you've got, um, it just I think you're on the road. Off. Thank you. I think you're gonna have to turn that off. I'm actually And, and Linda, you can leave us on mute if you need to. I know that you're on the road. I appreciate you joining us today. It was kind of short notice. Um, but if, if anybody wants to open this discussion, um, I'm going to allow. go ahead and open it up for discussion. Open it up for discussion. Hey, Patrick, I'll start. Um, I think most of the commissioners or all commissioners are aware that um, you know, uh, a few months ago, we started a, a uh, an ad hoc committee to talk about successor program to the Arts Accelerator Program. Um, and um, this this is come out of that meeting, uh, although it's not it's not um, it's just a confluence of uh, positive things that's happened that it's gonna allow us to apply for this grant, but I wanna give some people uh, some background on it. Um, you know, one of the things that the committee has been looking at is the folk arts and craft capital of the brand, uh, of Kentucky brand, and how important it is to our marketing strategy for tourism. Um, and as you all know, that we've been talking about, or we have for many years, promoted working artists. And if we're gonna to continue to promote working artists, which the committee, and I think most of the Tourism Commission believes that it's very important to our marketing strategy that we promote working artists, that we have working artists. So how best to, um, do that uh, and meet other strategic goals that's laid out primarily in a tourism uh, strategic plan and also the city's strategic plan that was completed in 2019. Um, so working through uh, the committee, um, you know, we've, we've talked about what strategies we could used to save the brand at uh, Berea at the folk arts and crafts capital of Kentucky. How we could support existing arts and crafts people in town and recruit new. And how best maybe to make recommendations on how to use community assets and tourism assets as part of a, a long-term cohesive, sustainable tourism plan. So in many weeks and months of discussions, we've figured out that this is a pretty good sized project and um, it's gonna require probably uh, to get us some help uh, and a facilitator and, um, or a group of people that can help us. So, 
as a committee, we're talking about this need for some help, you know, in developing this long-term strategic plan. Um, just fortunate that uh, Martina and Bruce, uh, which worked, you know, I worked on the uh, grant proposal, successful grant uh, for the pavilion. Martina uh, emailed us and said, hey, you know, there's a uh, invitation out there from the USDA for uh, rural business development grants. And it seems like something that uh, you guys might want to apply for. So, of course, we were very excited to hear that and um, got together and started talking about it. And uh, we were challenged because the deadline is submitting is Wednesday. So uh, we met last week, um, Bruce, Martina, and I, and Valerie, and started looking at this application, which Bruce had done most of the work uh, in filling this thing out. And we figured out that to get this grant, um, we needed to increase our probability of success. We needed to work out uh, some matching funds. Although this grant, and I sent you guys the paperwork on it this morning, is Rural Business Development Grant uh, Opportunity Grant, uh, does not require call sharing. Uh, Bruce has talked to the state director and said your probability of success is greatly increased by call sharing. So, and we also talked about other, or Bruce talk, also talked about other strategies um, to, to make the grant more likely to be accepted. So, um, you know, the USDA uh, really uh, likes uh, data collection, community partnerships, uh, strategic planning. They like alignment through different stakeholders in the community. And uh, we think it's a good way to leverage limited tourism funds to accomplish some big things. Um, it also may allow us to apply and receive future grants because we go through a community involvement process. We go through uh, strategic planning and we have data to back up future requests for funding of future uh, projects. Um, we think the U.S. if we could get this used to be a grant that would uh, greatly facilitate us uh, being successful in the future. So after talking, after Bruce has talked with the state director um, and um, got some pointers on how to prepare the grant, um, what we have decided as a group meaning um, the people working on this grant, is that we think the best chance of success is if we contribute 25% and request the USDA to do 75%. During this process, uh, we need to develop a budget. So the Kentucky League of Cities people that put this thing out. We talked to them about a tentative budget and they provided us one. Um, but we would also look at other organizations, individuals, groups that would be able to possibly do this project. And because it's a, a large amount of money, it would be probable that we would have to bid it um, we asked them for a budget and their budget 
they come up with was $55,750. That doesn't mean that we have to use these people, but in preparation of the grant, um, we have to present a budget. So that would mean that this, the tourism would have to put up $13,937 or approximately $14,000. So what I'm going to request that we do, and this would be 2021-22 budget numbers, that we, we have to submit a letter of commitment from the Tourism Commission to accompany the, the application by Wednesday. Thus, the phone call of the day, and I'm sorry it's been so quickly arranged, but we had this deadline. I'm going to make a motion in a few minutes after some further discussion, let you guys ask questions, that we, uh, as a Tourism Commission, commit um, up to $14,000 for this call sharing in this USDA grant. And um, so I'll open it up for questions and discussion. Uh, Rick, I, I um, got a question. I, I must not have got the email or, or must have overlooked it. I, I didn't see the, the information you sent out this morning. Um, the How do you come up with the, the $55,000 uh, budget again? Because, because um, uh, doesn't that seem a little low? Low? Well, yeah. the max, I'm sorry, the maximum amount, Charles, is, is that the USDA will put up on this grant is $50,000. Oh, okay. 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 okay so um, we had to take the only proposal that we had, uh, which we were going to get more proposals from different organizations, groups, entities that do this work. You know, what we hope to do is, um, and, and I'll, uh, you know, we want to uh, do some feasibility studies, some strategic planning, some commu get community input, do some surveys like we already have completed one survey. But, um, you know, the SDA really likes it when you have data. So uh, in collection, collecting that data and, and uh, doing the strategic planning, it, you know, it's gonna take some alignment between the different organizations. And, you know, one thing I, you know, Charles, I think you and I talked about last week when we discussed this shortly, uh, briefly, was in the uh, 2019 city strategic plan, it talks about, uh, the next step in the strategic planning process. This was uh, this strategic plan. The city was completed in 2019, but it put it put action steps in that plan. And one of the action steps is that uh, it says the city of Bria should convene a representative of the Kentucky Artisan Center, the Bria Arts Council, Bria College, Old Town Artisan Village, Chestnut Street Businesses, Chamber of Commerce, and any other interest party. Uh, to develop a cohesive arts and tourism development plan for drawing traffic to all attractions. And I think that that's something we've been talking about as a commission is trying to get an alignment between all the stakeholders in Berea because of the challenges that we have to attract people to Berea. You know, if we could get all these stakeholders rowing in the same direction and agreeing basically to a uh, comprehensive strategic plan, we could uh, use our money together and our budgets together and be more powerful. Okay, if you think that's enough. So in other words, you're getting, um, uh, you're not getting the maximum 50,000, you're getting a portion of that. Yeah, uh, the, the, yeah, $41,812 from USDA, and uh, $13,937 from tourism. And that's basically a 75, 20, well, it is exactly a 75, 25 split. Right. 
Okay. I, I, I'm good with it. I, I um, uh, you know, I, I guess the only recommendation I would have would be to go for the 50. That way, you, that, that way you have a buffer because these things always cost more than you realize. The stuff, especially the, when, a, when you get a professional facilitator, I know that sounds like a lot of money, but eh, it's still not a lot of money when you, when you consider what we're doing. Yeah, it's a big, it's a, it's a, it's a big project. Um, Rick, did you get um, a breakout bid? You said you sent something out to us this morning that broke out the uh, 50,000. No, I, no, I didn't, I didn't send you uh, uh, the money uh, budget. Oh. I, what I did send you was um, the sheet uh, this sheet outlining, um, describing the um, grant and laying out. I mean, there's there's a lot of things that you can click there, and a lot of information. But this is pretty much a fact sheet uh, about how what it does, what's intended for. Um, you know. Um, but, but there's a lot of detail that um, fortunately um, for us, uh, unfortunately for Bruce, uh, a lot of detail that he has to put in that application um, uh, to hopefully make it as probable to a success as best as good, as good as possible. So if the deadline, I think I understood you say the deadline would be this week for submitting the grant. Wednesday. Then do you know what the time frame is for approval going forward in the future with that? Um, or is there a deadline or? Well, I mean, there's a deadline. Uh, and what, we, what we're putting in the proposal is that we would uh, want this money to be available starting uh, July 1st of the next fiscal year which is coming up here shortly, and that we complete it by uh, March 15th of 2022. Uh, and that we purposely put it as uh, March uh, the 22, so that if there was other grants that we wanted to apply for that had a deadline, uh, we could work on that for the remainder of the year. Um, you know, as far as what what the next steps after this would be, and there might be other, there may be USDA funding available, or there may be other funders available um, about how to put these assets of the community to best use uh, to implement uh, this strategic plan that we come up with. Uh, Charles Arnold, there would be um, you know, one of the things that <clears throat> don't, I don't, I don't guess there's any harm. Uh, I, uh, I'd have to um, talk with our group to see, but I, I don't know if there would be any harm with requesting more money, as long as you know it wasn't exceed that fifty thousand dollars. You know, hey, I, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, uh, um, as long as it doesn't diminish your um, 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 chances of getting the grant, uh, I, I would go for the maximum because because we both know that there's going to be contingencies and 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 that would just be my suggestion. If it diminished your chances of getting the grant, then obviously I, I wouldn't do it. Well, then I, I guess we could make a. Um proposal that we go up to that number and then if, if the number um, you know when we 
talking to the state director of the USDA and said, well, you know, if we ask for the maximum, does that diminish our probability of success and we can back it down some? Yeah, yeah, uh, that's that sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Charles Saunders, did you have a comment or a question? Well, actually, I was going to say about the same thing that Charles Arnold just said. If we can just go for the max um, and then see where it shakes down. All right. Thank you, Charles. Uh, does anybody else have any comments? In, uh, Linda or Christy, I don't know if you all had any comments or questions or thoughts. Hey, Rick. Yes. Who chooses the uh, facilitator? Well, I think since it's tourism funds being spent, it would be the Tourism Commission. Well, I, I guess, let me be more specific. Is Valerie involved in helping us choose that facilitator? I'm sure she would be willing to help, or I'm not sure, but... Uh, I assumed that she'd be willing to help, you know, in her role, in her role um, with her job, there's certain things that she can do and she can't do um, yeah. or doesn't feel comfortable doing. I, I don't know the answer to that question. I know Valerie is um, well-versed as Martina is in grants and how they're approved and also about She's a very good communicator, so. Yeah, I'm just wondering how we find that facilitator. And it seems like a vetting process may need to be um, happening. Well, I think, I think one of the things that we would need to do first is define what we want to further define mm -hmm. what we want the facilitator to help us accomplish. Mm -hmm. And then look for areas of strength in those activities. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, you know, some, some groups are really good at uh, gathering information and data. <clears throat> so maybe some other individuals or groups might be better at other parts of the plan, of the strategic plan. Um, I think we would just need to further define what we want the facilitator or facilitators to do, and then um, try to find individuals, or organizations that are good at that. Okay, I guess we can. Since it's Wednesday, two days from now, I guess we can move forward with the application on the max, like Charles said, and then have a discussion on that. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I think you brought up a good question about who the, 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 this committee that you and Linda and I have been working on, we don't really have, I mean, we're just mm -hmm. a group of community members mm -hmm. that have attended and worked on these, this thinking, talking, discussing this idea, but we really don't have any legal authority to do anything really right so uh, i'm sure we can make recommendations and hopefully they will be listened to but I, I, you know off the top of my head without giving it a lot of thought i would think that the tourism commission since it's tourism commission money would be the deciders I agree, Charles, you did bring up some good questions um, as far as moving forward and finding the, the right person. You know, I, I keep, I just keep going back to the this strategic plan that was developed in 2019. And I would encourage the tourism commissioners to get a copy of that. And it lays out a pretty good framework of moving forward and also in looking at it you know recently after reading it a few months ago 
some of the things that we've been working on as a commission uh, and the city with the uh, Mont mountain bike, bike trail and with the other trail systems, um, they were recommended in the strategic uh, planning process. And so uh, I think we've done pretty good as far as following those recommendations, even though we haven't um, specifically focused on it. So I guess we need to figure out what that dollar amount would be. Um, so, so it'd be 25% of 50,000, is that right? If that's the max? Well, they would put up $50,000. So I guess uh, we just need to figure out 25% of $50,000, of course, is $12,500. Right. No, no, that's not right. That's not what I meant to say. That number is right, but um, let me see here. Some of you math lives probably figure this out faster than me, but um, Patrick, this is Bruce. If I could chime in for a second, well, I might be able to help Rick with the math. Please do, Bruce. Thank you. Um, in doing the draft, the draft um, grant right this morning, with that total amount of fifty-five thousand seven hundred fifty, keep in mind that we do have to present USDA rural development with the budget. To get one on short notice, we went to our friends with the Kentucky League of Cities and they put this together, sent it to us late in the day on Friday, the 55750. Okay. And right now, what, what I was told by Cheryl with uh, USDA Rural Development is even though there's no um, match required for this particular grant, you can request that they pay, we could request that they pay 50,000, we pay 5750. What she told me was that if there is a match, that that usually makes your chances better. And the sweet spot seemed to be the 25 to 30 okay. percent. Um, so we wrote in a uh, when I suggested this to Rick, we wrote in a 25 percent match, which of the 55, 750 would be 13, 9, 30, 7, 50, and requesting 41, 8, 12, 50 in federal. If we wanted that ask for more i could talk to cheryl and see what she thought if that would as charles uh, uh, mentioned if that would diminish our chances we probably ought to stick with that exact 75 25. Uh, in fact one could argue that we might be better off going with 30 percent which would be a little more that'd be more on the order of 15 16 grand um and the bottom line is i think that 55 750 is the number that we're going to use so if we wanted to ask more in federal funds for 50 grand and Cheryl thought that wouldn't hurt our chances, you could back off that 13,973 to somewhere around seven or 8,000 perhaps. Okay. So I, think, I think Rick Thomas's earlier suggestion of having a motion to, um, for the tourism to commission funds to match up to 14,000 would cover that. Because it shouldn't be any more than that. If we, unless we, unless you guys wanted to move to thirty percent instead of twenty five percent, but my my personal feeling after I talked with Cheryl, I think that was Thursday of last week. She's the pro, uh, uh, 
project person for USDA rural development, um, the matching funds make your chances much better. And typically 25 to 35, 25 to 30 percent is what uh, cities or counties would match if a city or county applies for this particular type of grant. I hope that's helpful. I didn't mean to butt in, but uh, wanted to be here just in case you needed me. And it seems like that might be something that will help you all with your decision and your motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Fraley. Um, yeah, that makes sense. I, I was trying to understand the number and I, I got it now. I understand where that 13,917 came from. Um, okay. So uh, that makes sense to me. Uh, I think that's not really much higher than what we kind of originally uh, discussed when I reached out to everybody. Um, and Christy, I, I apologize. You're the only one I wasn't able to get a hold of last week, but I think that you probably got caught up on the information. Um, so um, I think what we're looking for is probably a motion to uh, match this grant money. Patrick, I'd like to make a motion that the Berea Tourism Committee send a letter of commitment of up to $14,000 with the application to the USDA for a grant mm -hmm. for Rural Business Development Grant. All right. Thank you, Rick. Do I have a second? I second that. Thank you, Charles. Take a quick roll call. Uh, Linda, I'm actually gonna start with you. Great. I may lose the internet again. Um, uh, yay, I'm all for it. Perfect, thank you, Linda. Just in case we lose you, I know you're on the road. Um, and thank you again for joining us. Um, and, and note that Christy did join us a little bit late, so I wanna make sure we got her um, on attendance. Um, and Christy? We'll yes. go with you next. Yes. All right. Wonderful. Uh, Charles Saunders. Yes. Thank you, Charles. Rick Thomas. Yes. And Charles Arnold. Yes. And myself is a yes as well. Um, so I think that gives us some uh, room. Uh, the 14,000, um, I think that's a good number. So we can go up to that. Um, so it looks like that one um, will help us. And then we'll go ahead and as far as drafting the letter, is that something that you would do, Rick? Well, Patrick, it has to come from you. Um, let me let me talk to uh, our group. Okay. And see what are the key points, uh, the key verbiage that needs to be included in that letter. But that that uh, that letter would have to be signed you as the chair okay uh or donna i'm not sure um but um I, I don't remember in our last grant if it was donna that signed it or uh ahmed but i, I think it was ahmed but anyway it's just got to say yeah you know if you give us this money We'll put this, we, we make a commitment to you that we will put this money up. Wonderful. Yeah, if you and can it, get it, me the, the key points, um, I'm happy to put that letter together. Patrick, if you don't mind me interjecting again, I'd be happy to provide you with the draft. And um, when we did the USDA uh, Rural Development Grant last year, where we received funding for the pavilion, it okay. Was, they did request that that be signed by the chair of the commission. So I think the appropriate person would be you, sir. Wonderful. Thank you, Mary Fraley. Um, that sounds even better to me. So I will just uh, wait for that letter. And then um, uh, Donna uh, and Rick, I guess we can just take a quick look at it together at the end. And then we will get that submitted. Yeah, we have to... Uh we're going to we're going to have some letters of support from community members added to that uh, application packet as we did with with the, uh, the pavilion uh, grant uh, again the USDA USDA lacks to see uh, support from the entire community from different parts of the community uh, I'm sure that will add points to our application 
Bruce, did I forget anything else to talk about? Uh, I, I know this is kind of quick, came up quick. So um, I know you, you're putting a lot of work into it and I really. Uh, no, no, sir, you covered it well. And uh, I appreciate it. I think this will be uh, um, very helpful. Uh, if this is approved, it actually accomplishes a couple of different things. It gets 75% of a detailed strategic plan specifically for tourism paid for um, with federal funds, which all of us pay our federal taxes and it's bringing that back to the community. Um, and I, I think it will illuminate uh, a road plan or a step-by-step -step process for the commission in time uh, for you to follow. And it just looked like a really good opportunity for us to apply for this year. This year. I will mention that USDA Rural Development has been very interested in Berea and was very helpful to us last year with the um, um, with the grant with the pavilion, and um, we were very much encouraged to apply for this as well. Last year, just incidentally, it's called an enterprise grant, which is the higher amount that goes up to one hundred thousand dollars, and we received the maximum on that. Um, the grant we're applying for this year is under the same program, but it's called an opportunity grant. So it's a little bit different in the smaller money amount that goes up to 50000 and And uh, just looked like a really good opportunity. I think it's good for everyone and appreciate your all's, your all's help and your vote. And I, and I don't mind doing the work. I, I wrote the one last year and I thought it's easier for me to type it up than it is to write it and have someone else type it. So I about, about have it done. Just had to plug in the numbers. Thank you all. Thank you, Mayor Fraley. All right. Um, does anybody else have any other comments? All right. Do I have a motion? I guess next on the agenda is motion to adjourn. If there's no other comments. So moved. All right. Take a quick roll. Uh, myself, yes. Charles, Ar Charles Arnold. Yes. Um, Christy Napier. Yes. Linda Ross. Yes. Thank you. Charles Saunders. Yes. And Rick Thomas. Yes. All right. Thank you, everybody, for the um, short notice on the on meeting today. I uh, appreciate everybody's time and comments and really look forward to seeing uh, seeing this move forward, hopefully. Thanks, everyone, and have a great afternoon. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you.